All right, what's good everyone? So for the first video of the new year, I'm gonna be showing you what's been going on with the breeding season. I'm gonna show you the ball pythons, blood pythons, the short tail pythons. We already had a few females, already have ovulations, and a few more that is about to start having ovulations now. So let's start with the ball pythons first. All right, so we're starting with the ball pythons first, as this girl will be the first snake to lay this season for me. She already had her um, pre-lay shed. She's a VPI exempt clown. I produced her actually myself back in um, 2017. And this is actually gonna be her first clutch. This is probably one of my most anticipated clutches of the season for ball pythons. I bred her to a Coral Glow Black Pastel VPI Exantic 100% Head for Clown. I also bred him to another VPI Exantic Clown female, so I'm hoping that girl goes as well. It'll better my odds on um, hitting what I want to hit. And that male is pretty crazy looking, so I'm going to actually post a picture of him now so y'all can see how he looks as, um, as a breeder adult. This is the first girl that will be dropping a clutch for me, so keep an eye out for that video. Alright, so for the next girl, I had to climb all the way up to the top of the rack, so it's probably going to look really bright up here. But here's a black hair, black pastel, and she's actually probably going to um, shed today. Uh, this is her in her pre late shed. She's already reverted back to her normal colors, so I know she's either going to shed today or tomorrow. But this girl I'm really looking forward to. Her clutch that she was bred to on my Hypo Tri Strike. Really nice um, combo, black head, black pastel. So hopefully down the line I can produce um, a Hypo Tri Strike, black head, black pastel. Let's move on to the next. All right, so here we have a black pastel pie. Another animal I produced. The GHI Black I produced as well. So a lot of the girls going this season are animals I produced myself. But she is about to have an ovulation. Pretty sure she's about to have one. She's feeling real um, firm here. But yeah, nice um, medium white, a lot of pattern. There's no other genes in this girl. Anyone that's been following me, um, for all these years, I've seen that this line of black pastel, I've produced um, a lot of low to medium white um, black pastel pies as well as black pastel pie combos with pattern as well. So you can see right here, that's a banana black pastel pie, girl. Still a lot of pattern on these animals. So this line is a really nice line. Usually a lot of black pastels, um, black pastel pies are gonna be all the way white up to the top of the head. That'll be the only color and then the tip of the tail. This line, this line does throw out um, the high white ones as well. But I usually produce way more of the, the lower to medium white black pastel pies. She was bred to a dreamsicle, which is um, a lavender pied. And then here's the next girl. Same thing, black pastel pied I produce, bred to a dreamsicle, same dreamsicle male. So what I'm hoping to produce is black pastel pies that are low to medium whites, 100% um, head for lavender. Now this girl's about to ovulate, you can kind of see, she's starting to extend off the floor. So that's, that's how about to um, blow up soon. All right, for the last one for the ball pythons, here's our hypo clown girl. Really, really firm all the way through. Going to have an ovulation soon. I mean, she's, this is rock hard. Really just solid, solid all the way through. And she was bred to um, a hypo tri-stripe. So I'm looking forward to pretty much probably holding back that entire clutch. But this is so far the beginning for the ball pythons. I still have a lot of other ball pythons that are starting to look really good as well. So now we're gonna get down to the, um, the blood pythons and short tail pythons. Right, so for the short tail pythons, 
wherever Blue Ghost Marble Girl. She actually just had an ovulation and she's in um prelay shed right now. Let me see. If we can see it. Cause she's still really firm. All throughout here is really hard, really swollen. If you watch as she moves in. Really all all really firm right here. Yeah, she was massive. This was like double the size all the way through, so let's get you back in. This is gonna be my first um season breeding um Borneos, so it'll be my first time producing um Borneo babies. Next girl up. Move my hand from her. We got a nice big marble girl here. Now if you look, all of this right here is swollen. So she's about to ovulate. All this is gonna just blow up. The tail is gonna curve, it's gonna be real thin. And the rest of the body, she's gonna look like she swallowed um, all the football, so. Both girls were bred to uh, Blue Ghost possible marble male, so hoping to just go for a lot of marble stuff. Oh, this girl's actually um, a genetic stripe marble, so she's not just marble. But that's probably it for the short tails. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have um, some option short tails this year. All right, so for the blood pythons, here's the first girl that went. She actually just had her ovulation a few days ago. So you can see she's still kind of um she's still kind of really swollen. She's a little upset. She's not let me touch her right now. Yeah, this is an ivory. And she does have an additional gene that we're not really sure what it is just yet. I do think it's um the mega gene. It's um it's a gene that popped up out of um Cryptic's collection many years ago. And uh Steve Tillis discovered it and kind of um named it. So, cause um, ivories aren't supposed to be this dirty or dark looking. And then um, this girl, the breed I got for, got her from, he already bred her to a golden eye and produced double sevens that were all really dark and dirty looking as well. Not maybe not as extreme as this mom, but um, you could definitely see uh, whatever else is going on in her past over. So I'm gonna show you real quick, uh, Mega Matrix. Just so you have an idea why I think that one has the Mega Gene. So here's a Mega Matrix, really dark animal. And then I'm gonna show you a picture of another one I had some years back. So you see how dark this girl is. For a matrix, lots of black like the ivory had in her. Really, really dark animal. And she was, and both both these girls were bred to um, T neck golden eyes. So I'm still waiting for this one to see if she's gonna go or not. Not 100% sure. All right, so for the next one. We have a Toba Het T plus albino. Let me see. Yeah, she's starting to feel firm right throughout there. She was also bred to a Toba 100% Het T plus albino. So this is what, um, yeah, the project I'm looking the most forward to this season is trying to produce the first Super Toba. So we don't know how that's gonna turn out. But well, she's looking pretty good. Next girl over. Yeah, you can see right here. Crazy swollen, all this. And this is a T plus golden eye. So she's a caramel albino golden eye. And she was bred to um, a super zigzag. Hopefully we'll see um, 
Golden Eye Zigzags, 100% head for T plus albino. Let's see. Yeah. Really, really firm all the way through. So those girls are looking good. All right, here's the next girl. It's a T plus albino golden eye ivory. Let me see. Yeah, she's looking good. Her spine's starting to disappear, so I know she's building. And she was also bred to um, a Toba 100% hat for T plus albino. So hopefully I can produce a Toba golden eye matrix or Toba 007 as well as produce them in um, T plus form because that hasn't been done yet. All right, so here's a CBE stripe, 100% het for T neck albino. She is also possible het for um, T plus albino as well. All this is swelling up right now, really nice. She was bred back to um, a CBE stripe head T neck albino, so I'm hoping to produce uh, T neck albino CBE stripes as well as hopefully a super stripe T neck albino. Any day now for that one. All right, so this girl's starting to look pretty good as well. This is a pollen. I bred her to a T neck albino golden eye, but she's swelling up really nice. All the way through, swelling up. So, hopefully, we could see um, T neck pollens one day and uh, T neck flowers. Super formula to the pollen is the flower. This one, yeah, this one's about to ovulate. Same thing that Black Pastel was doing. All this is starting to come off the ground. She's really rock hard right throughout here. So this is a, a Batrix, 100% head for T-neck albino. And she was bred to a T-neck golden eye. So hopefully we have a shot at producing um, T-neck pixels, as well as T-neck pixels with our matrix in them. But yeah, she's really, yeah, you see all this swelling. This is starting to curve right here. So that's really good. This will be her first clutch as well. All right, so here's another girl. That's really starting to swell up. 007, 100% heifer T-neck albino. So she's gonna ovulate soon. Same thing, she's starting to come off the floor. And she was bred to a T-neg albino batik. So. And then for the last girl. See how swollen this girl looks all the way through. Like her spine ain't even showing no more. But look at her, swollen. I'm not sure if I missed the ovulation already. I don't think I did. I think it's about to happen soon. But she's an m, &M. Magpie Matrix. I produced her back in uh, 2017 and named this gene. She's possible head for T plus albino. And she was bred to an Irie Golden Eye head T plus albino. So you can just tell she's really massive. She doesn't want to be touched at all. Yeah, look, she's starting to get lumpy right here. You're all right. There you go. But that's it so far. But we still have a bunch of other animals I'm waiting on, so. All right, so in the comments down below, let me know which projects you think are the most exciting. But y'all already know what it is. Hate, comment, subscribe. Till next time. Later.